education and social protection, building ASEAN social cultural community for the future. It's a very interesting topic. There are four big concepts uh, mentioned here uh, in our uh, title of the session. Uh, each one of uh, uh, them uh, has its own uh, dynamics, has its own uh, uh, platforms that can uh, help uh, build our ASEAN social cultural community. Um, uh, social protection, uh, there was a uh, ASEAN declaration on uh, social protection uh, in 2013 uh, in um, uh, Brunei Darussalam. And just last week, uh, the Philippines hosted a high-level conference on uh, social protection. Uh, education, uh, we heard this morning a uh, discussion about the ASEAN University Network. There are lots of cooperations we are doing in the education sector. Uh, networking, um, uh, while uh, ASEAN is a group of uh, 10 member states, our cooperation is not limited to us alone. We partner with uh, our dialogue partners, uh, with different uh, stakeholders, uh, think tank. There are uh, uh, track one activities in uh, ASEAN involving government uh, agencies, and there is uh, track 1.5. Where we have, uh, we are, where we are joined by uh, think tanks and uh, academe. So that that's uh, one of the networking uh, channels of uh, ASEAN innovation. This is interesting because it's uh, uh, usually associated with ASEAN economic community. Uh, its use of uh, technology. So it will be interesting to uh, hear from our speakers how this can be applied in the ASCC. We are fortunate to have with us uh, distinguished uh, speakers, um, whom I will call uh, one by one, uh, uh, and then they will be making their presentations. After that, uh, we will have a discussion who will react to the presentations of uh, our two speakers, and then after which we will uh, open the floor for comments and uh, Q&A from uh, the audience. So may I have the pleasure of introducing our uh, first speaker. Um, Dr. Federico Macaranas, a uh, full uh, professor at the Asian Institute of Management. He was uh, one of us in the DFA, used to be our undersecretary for uh, APEC. Uh, he was there when I entered the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs as a junior officer. And he's now a uh, co-director of uh, the AIM ASEAN 2015 project and was the director of the AIM AVAC Research Project where he authored the technical report entitled Globalizing MSMEs from Business and Society Perspective. Um, he was also the chair of the 1996 uh, SOM of the APEC, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier. He is best known for initiating steering seminar issues in the agenda of trade and investment liberalization and economic technical cooperation in APEC. Um, in 2001, President Arroyo conferred on him the Gawad Babini, the Ilang Kamano Award, the highest award given by the Philippine government for diplomatic service. Uh, he has numerous publications, uh, books and book chapters, journals, as well as popular articles on human resource development, regional economic integration, regional national local competitiveness, science and technology in development management. So uh, please uh, uh, help me welcome uh, Dr. Federico Macaranes. Good afternoon, I just put my alarm clock because I'm given only 20 minutes. Originally, it was a longer one, but because we're delayed by half an hour, I guess 20 minutes would be enough to condense materials for your consideration. Uh, the title of this conference is Building ASEAN Social Cultural Community and Nation Building. Why nation building? We're talking about ASEAN. And in the preface of the conference, it said, ASEAN has moved from nation building to regional <laughs> community development. So why are we still in nation building? Are we trying to say that like Trump, we should only think of our own nation or should we think of ASEAN? Second, earlier you noted that President Ramos was said to say, this is the easiest and the hardest of all communities. So my question is, do you understand why it is easiest and hardest? 
I will use the framework of management science since I teach in a management school. And what I'd like to note is that it is easiest to agree that you want the best guapol pie in Mindanao. Guapol pie is like your apple pie. So everyone does not quarrel about that. You want apple pie, right? Yes. So it's called motherhood and apple pie statements. You like that. Mm. But that's the vision, that's the end. To get to bake the apple pie, however, it's very difficult. You'll say my guapol is better than your guapol is better than my guapol. So all of you fight over that. And then somebody says, well, my guapol is better because I use a different kind of fertilizer. That's called the inputs. So another one would say, well, I bake a guapol differently. So maybe we will arrive at a community differently. And so everyone has a different version of what is the best apple pie because the process is different and the inputs are all different. What is the nature of that? Well, networking is part of a process. Innovation is part of the input. Education is part of an input. And social protection is your outcome and your output. So this is all related. They are all related because you must think nation building is just one step towards community building. You cannot build a community without building nations. You cannot build a good family if your children are drug addicts or your parents don't care about drug addiction. You cannot build a society when indeed you only worry about economics and politics. This is the theme of my presentation. We believe that one ASEAN community is the challenge because now we're hearing from President Arroyo to all of the speakers this morning that we must face the world with a unified political, economic, and social cultural. I call it a trilemma. And I know that in Bangkok, people have difficulty what's a trilemma. I used to play English. There's a husband and a wife who are nicely married until a third party comes to their life. That's a trilemma. When that comes out, you face a trilemma. What is a trilemma in ASEAN? Governments start first, then business talk with them. Poor society. The Philippines knows society is out. So you have a trilemma from the beginning of ASEAN. And hence when we say, you must talk all at the same time from the people who participate in government, in markets and communities. That is the trilemma. So if it's very difficult to conceptualize, I'll give you three examples so that you'll be at home with why in the 21st century, our problem is rooted in two are in, but one is out. It's like a husband and a third party talking to each other, and the poor wife is worried, what are they talking about? <laughs> Until the wife and the third party realizes they were classmates in college, and now they talk behind their common male partner. <laughs> and then they find out, oh, we can do something to that guy, that dirty. So, what are the examples? I'll give you three examples, and later on we'll elaborate on that so you'll get this is really the 21st century problem of ASEAN. And if you don't appreciate that problem, then maybe get back to the 20th century. For example, number one, governments and social leaders discuss who is absent. It would be the business community. And I'll give you examples like financing and networking for small and medium enterprises. Number two, social leaders and business talk. There is no government. And soon you realize one of the issues is local government, which I think it was Civil Service Commissioner Bala who said, you know, most of these programs are local. So if you're talking of customs and tariff issues, it is just one local branch, maybe in Davao or in Cebu, that does not want a single window. And so in the end, you are captive to one of those local fiefdoms. It's called the feudal economy. Third, when governments and business talk, Pity again the poor social sector. They are not in the picture. And it is where education and innovation comes in. This is an overall message of the one ASEAN community. And I believe it is useful for your understanding of what we are talking about in this conference. My watch stopped. I want to make sure that it is working. Second idea, ASEAN citizenship. Everyone is talking about the ASCC being linked to the other pillars so that you will own it. But the young don't own ASEAN. This was founded by people of another generation. And if you do not think young, and there are many old people who think young because they have grandchildren to worry about, then you must think like young. And one of those would be an ASEAN song contest, 
or something that the millennium wants, social apps you, you can develop. And AI will be releasing two apps in November for the summit meeting so that the whole world will enjoy inter-university conversation on research and projects without the elitist ASEAN University Network, as somebody claimed this morning. And so this is the part of the picture where we say, we need value chain. What is a value chain? When China produces a Lenovo computer, parts of it are from ASEAN. So they need us in ASEAN, because they cannot produce Lenovo for the world without ASEAN. But pity the poor people in ASEAN who do not know technology. If their state universities do not teach them technology, then they will be behind the times. If only the advanced universities teach technology, then pity those children who will be left behind. This is the digital gap. But what is important is that China recognizes, together with Korea and Japan, that they belong to Northeast Asia. And that when they produce things like electronic gadgets, iPods, and all of the Samsung galaxies, they still believe ASEAN. And the SMEs are participating, and that's where you find the education and innovation come in. But then you also need to change education systems. All of you in education are teacher blackboard, talking to the blackboard. <laughs> they don't engage the students. They think the students don't have ideas. And so when they start lecturing, they talk to themselves. Or, as in graduate school, they use Harvard cases, and they are intended for the West. They're not even intended for the East. So when ASEAN says, we want an ASEAN University Network, it better be that they are relevant to the place. Our social networks are advanced. Our social systems, including education, must be advanced. This is now what we call learner-centered education. Ask what the kids want. One of my students want a drone to fly in coconut farms so that they will be able to identify when it's right for picking for <clears throat> coconut water or for the desiccated coconut or for the cocoa kwai, and that rightness is determined by advanced biotechnology. But the drone flies. And there is a priest in the Philippines who says drones are useful for plantation of bamboo to avoid environmental degradation in eroded places where typhoons bury many people through landslides. Wonderful. And they're being taught in poor communities of Aitas in the Cordilleras. Mm -hmm. So hello, we are not backward because we're primitive. We are primitive because our thinking is backward. That is 19th century education. Welcome to the 21st century. And let me say, of course, we must have new skills, not only for our livelihood, but also for emotional quotient. The number one problem with terrorists is that they emotionally dislodged. They were very educated, but then they don't find jobs. So what happens to them? They become privy to the deepest aspirations of people who would like to replace your civilization. Is that familiar to you? Many terrorists come from well-educated families. And the leaders of terrorism, even in this country as we speak, come from very educated families. So this is part of that, and I submit that our regional thinking must become global. Again, somebody was saying that this morning. When we think ASEAN, do we think climate change is a global issue? Well, if it is, then maybe let's participate in Paris talks, and not, unlike Trump, get out of the Paris talk. And of course, your people, your economic players, and your leaders in government will all have to talk the same language when they discuss why are people lost when economic discussions are foisted on them by our diplomats and by our media? Because you do not understand what is rule of origin and a stand tariff barrier. So in this sense, we are indeed very lucky that we have many young who are able to translate this into our current language. As we celebrate ASEAN, therefore, I pity that Governments and businesses talk at the highest level. There's an Asian equivalent in the business advisory councils. The top multinationals and the small medium enterprises are represented in that conversation. High level. They talk with leaders and prime ministers. But society, where are your social representatives in talking to these leaders? They are all in different groups. Youth will talk differently, that the women will talk differently, that the indigenous people will talk differently. There are no common finding things about this society. So the whole community approach is foisted on you. 
The global architecture, of course, was also cited earlier. We need new governance. We need new things to rule us by, and that is exactly why we need a new whole of community approach. I'll give you a flash. My timer is uh, very fast. These are the issues that you must understand in social cultural. Globalization and technology have driven the world into financial crisis. That you already know. But then you know the Chamba Initiative, which is a financing of ASEAN's own governments, came into the picture. Why is that important for civil society leaders to understand? Because that is the way you can generate jobs. Without finance, you won't have jobs, you won't have employment. And that is social problem. So the traditional IMF, US, EU policies would be to have what is known as a Washington Consensus. And that, of course, gave China a hard, difficult time because it cut down their GDP, they had to do what we call rebalancing the economy, create jobs, find new markets. Where are the markets? They are in new places, Asia, Africa, Central Asia. And that will require them to do what is the one belt, one road. That is why we are connected to the big plan of China. However, we know that there are other problems. There are ongoing trade talks, and in the trade talks, the concerns of poor people may be partly addressed, but not quite. And therefore, when China looks for new markets, they will say, let us now invent a marriage of the two contending trade uh, partnerships, TPP and RCP. So here, China emerges the winner because they are saying, let's have a free trade of Asia and the Pacific, combining all of those countries that are at war with each other in TPP and RCEP. Why? This is important for Filipinos and the rest of ASEAN because the maritime access in the South China Sea is a big elephant in the room. If you are not worried about the South China Sea, I do not know what part of the planet you come from. But this is exactly why all economic and social issues are connected. So now you understand why whole community is important. And this is again something that you can see very fast in the social issues. Increasing inequality, you blame elites and populist governments who are more inward looking. You have anti-immigration, you have domestic job creation only, and soon you have an impact on emerging countries like emerging Asia. We get safety nets in education and health, but we miss what is the key player in the world, the US and the Western countries. In the end, therefore, the social issues are reinvented as millennials come to life, and they say, you forgot us. We will inherit ASEAN for the future. We are the people you should ask what Asia should look like. And so the political security, we must engage them. And all in all, we're looking for a new world order. Somewhere in the earlier presentation, someone was citing the author of this idea, Richard Haas, who is very European. And we say we don't need European model for ASEAN. Indeed, we don't. And that's the reason why in the political security dimension, like terrorism and global security, we need new thinking. And that new thinking is cooperate and compete. Do not just compete, compete, compete. You must cooperate. So to speak, China and ASEAN must live with each other as enemies, but we can also be friends. The millennials have a word for that, friend and me. And the old have a word for that, sleeping with the enemy. Okay? And so my last presentation will be about where do we go in innovation? This is a very complex picture, but let me tell you what it is. On this scale, going up and down, it's called economic complexity. What is economic complexity? The more you put into a product, the more complex it is, the more jobs you generate. For example, when you eat rice, does the rice add value because there is research behind it? Because there is sophisticated marketing behind it? Because there is branding of the product behind it? And there is, therefore, value added along the way. But rice is rice. To you, the consumer, uneducated, you don't have a worry. But to the politician who need to generate jobs, they worry, right? Do I create more local jobs? The economic complexity addresses that. The more you create value added, the higher you are in the complexity. So your rice is more complex because Ely has saved the world from three famines. India, China, and perhaps another country's famine. So is it ASEAN trying to celebrate that? Yes, I think. There is an article in the area book on that. But this is the axis going up. Look at who are the most dynamic. Japan is number one. 
Singapore is number four. Uh, Singapore is number uh, eight. South Korea is uh, a little lower, but in the next slide, they have jumped up. What does this mean? They are all champions in complexity. They generate more jobs. Along this axis, we now sh show you the difference between what happened between 98, the first Asian financial crisis, and 2008, which is the last crisis. If you are increasing in your complexity, then you are in this direction. So what is the best part? It is to the right. You are increasing in the in the complexity as you become more financially unstable. Nipa, that's a very nice way of addressing the world. You face chaos, but you are more stable. Why? Because your society can afford to answer the instability. And the conclusion is very, very stark. Here, in 2008 to 2015, Japan and Korea are still tops, and all of the ASEAN are still on the right side. What is the meaning of that? Together, ASEAN and North Korea can help save this part of humanity from joblessness, from backwardness in innovation, from education that's 19th century, and social, social protection that is still in the debating table. Why? Because now SMEs can work with big businesses. Jollibee, for example, gets its onions from farmers who are educated in new age type of onion planting. And they're financed through government partnership with the church groups. And then they are able to sell access to the world because they're so productive. So poor people are now participating in global value chains. And indeed, Jollibee is more universal than you think. So I think it is very important that you appreciate that this is the trilemma. I'll just give you one example of the trilemma so that you remember husband, wife, and third party. This is the trilemma of stakeholders in ASEAN. Communities are crying, get us in to the high level talks. Governments are saying, when you're divided, youth, women, indigenous people get together so that we hear you as one. And then the businesses say, well, you governments and communities talk, we better help you. We will use the small and medium enterprises for our production in the large firms for the global value chain. So you will now have larger markets because if you stick to your small markets, you will forever be poor. Why is the Sari Sai store poor? Because they sell to their own village. Why is SM rich? Because a small department store in Tariedo became nationwide and soon regional. The Taiwanese are very rich because they sell to the world. The Filipinos are very poor because they sell in their neighborhood. Globalization helps. China is the best example. It liberated itself from poverty by going to global markets. And finally, you see that social protection as in conditional trans tra transfer, conditional transfer of cash and the universal health financing are issues you can finance if you know businesses have ways of doing that. Senator Cynthia Villarreal was saying, why are you giving cash to the poor? You should give them the kind of food they need. So give them money to plan. And that, of course, gets us to the local nature of ASEAN's dilemma. ASEAN must engage the local partners in governments, civil society, education, at the city level, at the provincial level. Because your feudal structure has to be reformed. ASEAN can only rise when its component parts understand globalization, interest for the globe and not just for their own vested interests, and definitely a common understanding of the future. It is more uncertain, and you may have to sleep with the enemy. Good day. Thank you. Thank you.